Number 69. Using the standard enthalpy of formation data in Appendix G, show how the standard enthalpy of formation of HCl gas can be used to determine the bond energy. Okay, so first things first is we have to use Appendix G to get standard enthalpy values, but in, in this case, we have to take those enthalpy values and determine a bond energy. So whenever we're dealing with bond energies, we should write out the, the appropriate balanced equation. Now, when you're dealing with bond energies, just know that you're always going to be breaking the compound. So if you want to find out the bond energy in a certain compound, you have to break that bond. So in essence, we want to find out the bond energy of HCl gas, so we have to break that compound up. We want to break that bond. And if we're breaking the compound, that means that that has to be on the reactant side. So I'm going to say that we have HCl gas, and I want to break that up. Now, the easiest way to do your bond energy formulas, and specifically if you want to write a formula for bond energy, is you're going to sever the two atoms the connection between them. So now you have just H and just Cl. The idea here is that you have your bonds on the left-hand side and you have no bonds on the right-hand side. So hydrogen is just going to be chilling by itself and chlorine is just going to be chilling by itself. Now you might ask a question by saying, well wait a minute, right? H by itself is a diatomic. That should be H2 and Cl2 is a diatomic as well. So shouldn't it be Cl2? But if we do do H2, is there any type of bond in this molecule? For sure there is. If we drew out the Lewis structure, it would be H single bonded to H. And when you're doing your bond energies, there cannot be any bonds on the left-hand side. So with that being the case, it can only just be H and it could only just be Cl. And when you're doing your bond energies, just know that it's gases all around. So we got gas for HCl, this H would be a gas, and so will the Cl. Okay, so now this is where we have to go to that appendix G to find out the delta H values, the standard enthalpy of formation, for these components. So we have a negative 92.307 kilojoules per mole for HCl, and then we got 217.97 and 121.3. Now what are we going to do with these numbers? Well, that's a good question, but you know that there's a formula, right? And maybe if you did your enthalpy uh, unit, it might come to you, right? It's this formula right here. It's your delta H for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction, is the sum of the products, right? This little symbol here means sum, and maybe I'll drop this down. And as I'm noticing this, let's just say sum, that just means addition. You're gonna add up your products and then minus the sum of your reactants. And as I'm noticing here, and it's irking me a little bit, I notice that I put the products in blue when I have this in red. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change the color just so that all the colors flow. So H is 217.97 and 121.3. And then this one will be in blue. Negative 92.307. Cool. So we just have to sum up the sides, right? Check to see if it's balanced, but this equation's balanced, 1H, 1Cl on both sides. We don't have to add anything on the reactant side because it's just ACL. But over here, it's hydrogen plus chlorine. So I have to sum up this side. I have to add, literally it's addition, right? The 217.97 plus the 121.3. So 217 plus 97 plus 121.3.
beautiful. So we get a total of 339.27 kilojoules for the uh, product side. And now we're ready to find out that delta H for the reaction. So we're going to do 339.27, the sum of the products, minus the sum of the reactants. So negative 92.307. And delta H for the reaction would be this number, bringing it down, minus a negative 92.307. Negative, you know, minus a negative is really a positive, but the calc will do that for me. And I get, I guess we should do sig figs uh, since we're, you know, adding. Eh. Technically here we only head to the tenths place, so we should round to the tenths place. So 431.6, that's good enough for me. Now, we just have to do a quick check because we say to ourselves, is this even the answer? This is the formation, the standard enthalpy for the formation, right, of what we just did. But just make sure that you only have one HCl bond in the compound. And if we just do, do the Lewis structure here, I have H single bonded to Cl with the six electrons around the chlorine. So for one of these, I only have the one bond. But let's just say that, you know, this, this compound would never exist, but just to show you that let's just say that you had two HCl bonds in the one compound. You would have to take this number and divide by two. You take the number and you divide by as many bonds that you have in that compound. But just, just to show you that since there's only uh, one bond here, this would be the answer. So in this case, the delta H is the bond energy. So we can just say BE, the bond energy of HCl gas is the 431.6 kilojoules per mole. And let's box it off. And that's it. Let's do that. And I think we're good to go. What do you think? Hopefully this helped you out. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel to help us out. Um, your support and your kind comments and everything that you guys have, have been doing for us throughout the whole journey has really been helping us out. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. And I'm just really glad that, you know, you guys can learn from this channel. So I hope you're having a great day out there. And I'll talk to you in the next lesson, all right? Okay, bye-bye.